What would happen if you could go back in time? Back to when you were a kid, but with all of your memories leading up to your adulthood, would you do anything differently? Would you tell yourself to study harder or party more? Would you eradicate your biggest mistake just so you wouldn't have to live without regret? Well, this anime covers this question in its own way, where the character is sent back in time to prevent a murder. Special thanks to Phil Poe for requesting this review through Patreon. Phil Poff. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Bokudake ga Inaimachi, also known as Erased, is the story of a young man named Satoru Fujinuma who has a strange ability that can send him back in time just before an accident is about to occur, to which he calls this ability Revival. When his mother Sachiko- <laughs> No. When his mother Sachiko gets too close to uncovering the identity of a serial killer, she is suddenly murdered with Satoru being set up as the murderer. Fleeing from the scene, instead of looking less suspicious by staring around to clear this story, yeah we're just gonna put a pin on that argument, Satoru finds himself experiencing his revival ability, but instead of going back by a couple of minutes or so, he's sent back 18 years in the past. He is now back in his primary school days before two of his classmates were mysteriously killed. Figuring that this event was triggered somehow by his mother's murder, Sotaro vows to protect his classmates from the serial killer while trying to figure out a way to change the past so his mother isn't murdered in the future. The series was one of the major highlights of 2016 for some great reasons. It's tapping in on a subject we can all relate to while making it a neat murder mystery. Hell, we awarded this series Best Mystery of 2016 next to Bungo Stray Dogs, but we couldn't find a place in our top 5 anime of the year. It could have been close, but it was up against great titles such as Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju, Mob Psycho, My Hero Academia, March Comes In Like a Lion, and of course, Yuri on Ice. I think it'd be fair to place this in the top 10 of 2016, but just barely as this show has some major gripes I couldn't really overlook. Here's some spoiler warnings for a two-year-old series, but you have been warned. Back to the scene that I pinned up previously, any smart person would stay around and prove that they're innocent, that he just came home to see his dead mother lying on the ground and is covered in her blood because he was trying to see if he could revive her somehow. Plus, he just got off of work so he has an alibi and he did not touch the murder weapon so there shouldn't be any fingerprints. With all of that, he should have been off the hook and have no reason to run away. But... Plot God demandeth, and we need to start this show somehow. On the other hand, if you live in a town with this many judgmental weasels to the point where they believe you're guilty by assumption, then I honestly don't blame Satoru for running away. It was shown that years ago, Satoru's friend, whom he called Yuki, was the one accused and found guilty over the murder of one of his classmates, Kayo, and all because he loved sitting in a park that was frequently filled with children playing, and he had questionable magazines. Seriously, it was bad enough that the main killer had used shoes similar to his just to frame him, but to automatically assume that he's guilty because they practically accused him of pedophilia because of the places he would go and the material he would read. It's no wonder that the killer keeps getting away with all of his murders because everyone in the city is an idiot. So tell me again why you thought he did it? Well, because the footprints found at the scene of the crime match his shoes. Yeah, they're generic snow boots that anybody could wear. Well, we're just gonna assume that he did it because he was found at the park creeping at other children. As if adults aren't allowed in the park. We may be putting an innocent man in jail, all because of assumptions. Well, what's this? It looks like the suspect had a Nintendo Switch. And of course, we all know that video games are the leading source to mass shootings. Case closed. I hate everyone in this town. Speaking of the killer, remember our top 10 list of the most incompetent villains in anime? Well... He's in it. For very good reasons. And speaking of top 10s, let's just read one of the comments from top 10 teachers in anime, shall we? Gaku Yashiro from Erased. After all, he helps the young students in taking care of one of their less fortunate classmates, even so far as to get her out of a troubled home, all the while there's a serial killer on the loose. What a stand-up guy. Oh man, you're so right. How could we ever forget this amazing teacher who loved his students like they were his own children? Oh wait. Major spoilers in 3, 2, 1, the teacher did it! The sweet and lovable teacher who helped his kids deal with a lot of issues is in fact the serial killer. But why? What would motivate him to kill so many children other than the fact that he knew he could get away with it with how stupid the people around him really are? It's because he grew a fetish as a child after drowning some hamsters. 
Really? This is a hard question, but which parent is worse? The one who beats her child on a daily basis because she blames all of her problems on her? The mother of that mother who blames herself for her child's mental instability because she dare convince her to dump her no good abusive husband? Or the ones that turned a blind eye towards their son's actions as he literally develops a thirst for blood after drowning some hamsters? Seriously, mom and dad, where were you? And the quick answer to that question is they're all pretty bad. Anyways, Gaku has a drive to watch small and helpless creatures fight to stay alive as indicated by how fascinated he was when one of his hamsters he tried to drown survived by staying on top of his drowned siblings. He carefully singles out children who tend to wander off alone, lure them away to kill them, and leave their bodies in familiar spots while framing someone who knew the victim. He studies their schedules, who they hang out with, and strikes at the opportune moment. But then he turns to Satoru since he was involved with all three victims, thus preventing Ending their murders. Naturally, this kid's gotta die. But when Satoru somehow survives his attack and wakes up after being in a coma for 18 years, with Gaku naturally having multiple opportunities to kill him in the hospital, he is right there to see his one and only witness come back to life while also trying to frame him with the potential murder of another child who hangs out with him at the hospital. I'll buy the fact that maybe Satoru shouting, I know! Yeah, that struck his curiosity and he's able to get him out just in time while also feeding his freakish fetish, but to risk a chance to frame this kid for murder while forgetting the fact that Satoru stopped this guy with three of his murders in the past just to feed his fetish is ridiculous. I guess because Satoru fascinates him just like that one soul surviving hamster, he feels he can't live unless Satoru is alive, but it's seriously clumsy of him to prioritize his fetish over common sense. But alas, this series isn't driven on logic, but more on emotions. Yes, Sotoro relied on his memories to pin down when and where the murders would take place, but he relies on his emotions and self-determination to make sure none of his classmates dies. He points out that as a kid, he would do anything to make sure everyone liked him and prevented him from speaking up if it meant it would penalize his reputation at school. But given the second chance with his revival ability, he's able to speak up for those who feel isolated and silenced by their peers and circumstances. especially in this scene where one of the popular girls tries to frame Kaya for stealing the lunch money only to be instantly shut down by Satoru. This is something a lot of us children would be too shy or scared to do as we watch the accused suffer all the bullying when we're the ones who could have stood up for them if we were brave enough. And that's why this story connects with a lot of people young and old. It shows the impact our words and actions can have on other people if we're brave enough to make those connections. Satoru started off as a lonely and struggling artist wasting his days away at a pizza shop. But as he's given the second chance to live out his childhood and confront his innermost regrets, he's able to create everlasting friendships with his fellow classmates. Even the once popular girl who was shut down by him and became the new isolated child becomes his friend because he reaches out to her. His emotional bond and connection with each of his new friends helped shape this new future that now has him with a successful career as a manga artist, meeting up with all of his amazing friends, a possible relationship with his once co-worker who inspired him in the alternate timeline to never give up and has a mother who's not dead. Yay! It's an emotional story with some heartwarming feels, so I can't say this is a bad anime. It has its flaws with the villain and the city folk, but ultimately it's about the emotions and the moral this story teaches us. Have courage and be kind. Um, yeah, what she said. So if you were ever interested in the series, definitely give it a chance. It has a good message about making a positive connection to those around you and to be brave enough to stand up for your beliefs while also being yourself. That and everything else about it with the voice acting and animation is pretty good. It looks good for what it is, but the animation truly shines with the awesome opening and ending credits, both of which are accompanied by some really good songs. As for the English dubbing, it's good old Funimation and it's pretty good. Aside from Kenya's child voice that really didn't sound like a boy compared to the other kids, I'd say this was another stellar performance by Funimation staff. You can judge it for yourself as you can watch all 12 episodes, both dubbed and subbed on Hulu. If you've seen a race, let me know what you thought of the series in the comment section down below. If you haven't yet and are in the mood to watch a heartwarming murder mystery, never thought I'd put those two phrases together, then you should definitely check out Erased. Well, that takes care of another Patreon request. What's next on the list? Oh well, look, it's Veroni Kenshin. A classic anime. How many episodes are there again? Oh. Well, I should, uh, I should get started then. In the meantime...
come with me if you want to not die. Who the hell are you? One lucky some bitch. One hamster was still alive, standing atop the drowned corpse of one of its siblings. I, for one, can't wait to see what trouble the little guy gets up to next. I know this chubby scalawag has made my life a living hell. Surely if I drank his blood, I'd be at peace. But well. You've grown accustomed to my face. This isn't a duet. Sorry. Okay, children, let's start the day with a few new math problems. What is five times two? Come on, children, don't be shy. Just give it your best shot. Yes, Clyde? Twelve. Okay, now let's try to get an answer from someone who's not a complete retard. Bum, bum, bum. All right, I confess. I did it and I'm glad. I hated so Winslow. I hated them all. I don't even remember their names, but I hated them anyway. What about the two pigs? I killed the pigs because they were going to squeal. And the canary? He was going to sing. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. When we work together, it's much better. So, uh, can I help you? No, but maybe I can help you. Well, uh, I need an adult. I am an adult. I'm on my period! So I'm a 27-year-old man, adult man. People seem to think that I'm an immature man baby. People have called me as such, but I am an immature adult, and I know exactly what I'm doing in my life. Yes, you know. I remember everything, you son of a bitch. Would you eradicate your biggest mistake just so you wouldn't have to live with that regret? I would win the lottery! Damn it, sue me! It's America in a nutshell. They blame video games for everything. So he had an Xbox in his room. So? So? I, I, I would drown people in roller coaster tycoon. You don't, you don't see me trying to kill people at my job. <laughs> they, hello, Mr. Janitor. Dilly, 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 drop. <laughs> Janitor number two died. Yep. Or you would just make the little loop de loop roller coaster launch into the air and kill everybody riding into the lake. Or it would explode. Either it would crash into the lake or crash into the ground and go. Pfft. So these guests died. They, oh no. And my park's still. Running. <laughs> I want to wait for the drilling. Freaking neighbors. <laughs> okay. We made it. <laughs> God damn it. I hate the city. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real bad guy. Hey there, if you like what we do on this channel, be sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. If you wish to support us financially, we do have a Patreon page with numerous rewards to fit your budget. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Anime America, and be sure to check out our other channel, Pop Spectrum. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned to Anime America.